Hi everyone, tonight we're going to talk more about graphing perfect competition. We're also going to take a look at what the graph looks like when a firm is making profits in the short run. We're also going to look, look, take a look at what it looks like when a firm is making losses in the short run. We'll then take a look at the shutdown price and shutdown decisions and how average variable cost is really the cost that we need to look at in that uh, situation. So the first slide here you'll recognize as being the a uh, perfectly competitive market where you have the horizontal marginal revenue curve, curve, which is also price and is also demand, purple average total cost curve, and the red marginal cost curve. Minimum average total cost is C. It's also the minimum cost output, and it is also the point up to which this producer in the perfectly competitive market is going to want to produce because it produces up to the point where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Let's take a look at that same firm. If they're operating where the market price is actually above the intersection of marginal cost and uh, the average total cost. So you can see here again, just like before, a firm is going to gravitate to producing to the point where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. And that is point E, otherwise known as the optimal output. You remember that. From here, this is the optimal output point. You'll notice that two things change. The first is that the firm has moved up from this intersection of marginal cost, marginal revenue, and average total cost. You'll also notice that average total cost, because quantity has increased, in this case from four to five, so too has the average total cost of production. So because this was the minimum average total cost and the firm has chosen to exceed that point of production, it's now moving up the average total cost curve. It's starting to experience what, uh, what would be considered some diminishing marginal returns from the production of this additional output. Now take a look at this as well. You'll notice that Calculation of profit is a pretty simple calculation, and that's because you can look at the distance between E and Z, and up here I put a Z minus Z, and you get unit profit, $18 at the new market price, minus $14.40, again, not 14, that was the old market price. If we look up here, $14 was the market price, you'll notice that the break even uh, rather, I'm sorry, the, the break-even price is still $14, but the profit is E minus Z times the quantity output here. So it is E minus Z times 5. Let's take a look at the other side of the coin where there is, uh, where, where a firm is operating at a loss in the short term. What does that look like? Well, we have here a break-even price of $14 and break-even defined as that intersection of marginal cost and average total cost. We also have a situation where instead of a, an $18 price, we're now producing at a $10 market price. Well, what happens? Once again, the firm is going to gravitate to the point where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Just so happens that marginal cost and marginal revenue here intersect at a point that is below the average total cost curve. That means I am getting $10 in revenue for every unit I sell, but my per unit cost is $14.67. Again, it has gone above the average total cost point up to $14.67. And in this case, in the short term, instead of a unit profit, I will actually incur a unit loss. And that is the area Y or rather the distance y minus a will be the amount of my loss. Here I put a minus y, sorry about that. I'll change that for the PDF tomorrow. It's y minus a times the quantity being produced. And here, that quantity produced happens to be three units. So it's 14.67 minus $10 times three units. Okay, so that's short run looking at what happens when operating at a profit when operating at a loss, what does the amount of profit or loss look like? Now let's consider the short run production decision. So 
how long should a firm continue producing when the let's talk specifically about when the price falls here's something important to remember in the short run fixed costs don't matter when you're making the short run production decision that's simply because you can't change fixed cost anyway and there will be points along this curve where you can actually cover some of your fixed cost and some of your uh, average variable cost and lose less money than if you weren't producing at all. And let's take a look at that, see what that looks like. Well, first of all, at point E, we'd be operating at a significant profit. We've already looked at that in uh, the prior slide. 14 was our break even point. Now, look what happens when we move down this curve. At $12, we're still operating below the average total cost, so we are operating at a loss, but we're operating at a point above the average variable cost, and the short-run production decision requires that you operate at least above the average variable cost. If you're operating above the average variable cost, you're taking care of your variable cost and some portion of fixed cost. So in the short term, because you're taking care of some of your fixed cost, if the price, if the market price is above this lowest average variable cost, you're at least covering some of that fixed cost that's out there. And rather than having to continue making that mortgage payment, continue making whatever the, that fixed cost payment is without being able to recoup any of it. Now, interestingly, what we've derived here in red also becomes the short run individual supply curve. Why is that? Well, because this marginal cost curve in the short run, in fact, becomes the supply curve for this firm. It will supply the following amounts at the following prices. It supplies that quantity, those quantities into the market. Very important though, at the bottom of average variable cost, if the producer can't get at least that amount, so in this case, 10, Look what happens to the short run supply curve. It's the red. So it goes down here, straight across, and at any price below 10, the quantity supplied immediately goes to zero because it's not even covering its average variable costs. The book has a nice summary, which is the, the perfectly competitive firm's uh, profitability. They call it profitability and production con conditions. And it shows you in each of the cases when price is greater than minimum average total cost, when it is less than minimum average total cost, and so on, tells you what will happen when these price conditions, these market price conditions exist, what happens for the firm and what decisions will it make. All right, so tonight, what have we talked about? We took a quick look and review at the perfectly competitive, uh, perfectly competitive firm and output at a point where marginal cost, average total cost, and marginal revenue slash price slash demand come together. We also considered a situation where the market price is above the minimum average total cost. We're able to calculate the profit. We also looked where it's producing below the minimum average total cost and how we calculate the resulting loss. We also took a look at how average variable cost creates a point called the shutdown price. The price, the market price below which a firm should actually stop producing rather than incurring the costs that don't even, uh, uh, the costs that don't even cover average variable or average fixed costs. Remember, if a firm is able to get at least some of its average fixed costs covered, then it is better off producing, will lose less money if it produces at this output in the short run versus not producing at all. Recall the supply curve, the short run individual supply curve, which is the red, and then a quick chart that sums up the perfectly competitive firm's profitability and production conditions. That's it for tonight. Have a great evening. I'll see you tomorrow.